Pero tayo yung blue tatlo. <laughs> Going to... So... In stream? Hello everyone, hope you're having an amazing night. It's Clyde and tonight we will going to Jalan Alur Food Street in Kuala Lumpur. From the condo, I took a grab going to Titiwangsa Station. From there, it's a connecting station going to Bukit Bintang area. The moment we are still looking for the Titiwangsa Station because I pinned the wrong destination at the grab car application. So this is the Titiwangsa Station. It's a rapid transit interchange station, Kuala Lumpur, Malaysia. The station is served by the LRT Ampang and Sari Petaling Lines and the KL Monorail Line. The station allows seamless physical and fare integration between the three train lines. Situated on Jalan Tun Razak in Pekeliling Serving District of Titiwangsa, the station is also located beside the Gombak River and an adjoining bus station. In the future, it will be integrated with the Putra Jaya Line and the Circle Line of the KV MRT project. In 1998, as part of the former Star LRT Line second phase of development, the station was intended to connect Titiwangsa to other parts of the city and surrounding areas. Under phase 2 of the Star Line, a 15km track with 11 stations was built to serve the northern and southern areas of Kuala Lumpur to cater for the Commonwealth Village and the National Sports Complex in Bukit Jalil. During the 1998 Commonwealth Games in Kuala Lumpur, at that time, Titiwangsa Station was named as Ton Razak Station. So, we arrive in Raja Chulan Monorail Station. It's a Malaysian elevated monorail train station that serves as a part of the Kuala Lumpur Monorail. Located in Kuala Lumpur and opened alongside the rest of the monorail service on August 31, 2003. Right now, we are here inside in the Pavilion Kuala Lumpur. It's a shopping center situated in the Bukit Bintang District in Kuala Lumpur, Malaysia. Pavilion Kuala Lumpur was built on the former site of Bukit Bintang Girls School, the oldest school in Kuala Lumpur which was moved to Cheras as Sekola Seri Bintang Utara in 2000. 
opened on 20 September 2007, the development consists of a premier shopping center, two blocks of service apartments, an office block, and a five-star hotel. Pavilion Kuala Lumpur consists of eight shopping precincts and a row of street front boutiques. Spanning 20,400 square feet, Beauty Hall is an oasis of rest and relaxation for shoppers with a myriad of spas and salons. As you can see, there are many tourists now in Kuala Lumpur and this is the current night situation of Pavilion area. From April 1st, 2022, foreign visitors will once again be able to travel to Malaysia without applying for the My Travel Pass, which was previously required to enter Malaysia. Now that the country's borders are reopened, visitors will be required to download and activate the My Sejatera app for the duration of their time in Malaysia. This is a bold move by the Malaysian Tourist Board who are following the footsteps of Thailand and Vietnam to get tourists flowing into Malaysian attractions again. This all means that anyone who was planning to visit Malaysia before the COVID-19 pandemic and was disappointed can now fulfill their dreams with an almost unrestricted visit to one of the most interesting and beautiful tourist destinations on the planet. Both vaccinated and unvaccinated tourists are now free to visit Malaysia although there will be different rules and restrictions depending on your vaccination status. So right now, on my way to Jalan Alor Street Foods because I'm starving and I can't wait to taste a different selection of street foods. This area is the Bukit Bintang, stylized as Bintang Walk or Star Hill. The latter being a translation of the Malay name is the Shopping and Entertainment District of Kuala Lumpur, Malaysia. It encompasses Jalan Bukit Bintang and its immediate surrounding areas. The area has long been Kuala Lumpur's most prominent retail belt that is home to many landmark shopping centers, alfresco cafes, bars, night markets, food street, mamak stalls, as well as hawker type eateries. This area is popular among tourists and locals, especially among the youths. In June 2021, the local municipal and authority Kuala Lumpur City Hall has created a Shibuya-style pedestrian crossing at the junction of Bukit Bintang, located in front of the iconic Bukit Bintang outlet, just below the KL monorail line. This is done to increase the walkability in the area. So right now, we are here in Jalan Alur Food Street. So Jalan Alur is a unique food destination in the heart of Kuala Lumpur. The whole character of the city changes when you step onto the street. Gan are the modern shopping malls that align the city, which are replaced with something of the past age. During the day, there is not much activity but when the sun goes down, the street will be hustling and bustling with activity. It was once known as a red light district and remnants of those activities still exist. However, after several facelifts, the street has literally become a food haven. So, this is the first stall and let's try their street foods. 
some of the best culinary delights that Malaysia has to offer are not at the swanky overpriced restaurants, but right at the sidewalks, in the rows and rows of hawker stalls. On Jalan Alor, these stalls will take up both sides of the road selling food that best represents Malaysia. This is not just a place for the locals but foreigners also. Frequently visit here to taste the unique dishes that they would most probably not be able to back home. The best advice for people who wish to visit Jalan Alur is to bring their appetite. As mentioned, there are plenty to choose from here and you wouldn't be able to try everything in a single trip. So, it is important that you make several trips to this street if there is a high possibility that you will not be returning to Jalan Alur for quite a while. Here, you are not just tasting the food here but also the culture in Malaysia. Diversity does not just exist in the population but that very factor that makes Malaysia so special is also translated in its cooking. While most of the menus are in Chinese characters, there are some who also provide English translation in order to cater to tourists and a growing number of locals who are not Chinese educated. This is of course good news for foreigners as they will also be able to order from the translated menus. If you do come across a menu in Chinese but are not able to read, don't be intimidated but ask for recommendations instead. This way, you will be able to truly experience what the street has to truly offer. The character of the street takes a life of its own and you will definitely be missing out if you do not go there for a visit. Jalan Alur is synonymous with good food, so much that there were much protests when the local authorities renamed the road. Jalan Alur indeed has a lot to offer for local visitors as well as those coming from abroad, so head there and experience it for yourself. As Jalan Alur is located within the Bukit Bintang area, it can be easily found if you are staying somewhere in the city center. For example, Radium Palace is located 1 minute from the food street. From Capitol Hotel, it is a 2 minute walk and 5 star Grand Millennium is only 10 minutes from Jalan Alur. If you are staying outside the city center, you can get to Jalan Alur by metro, get out at Bukit Bintang Station. From there, it is a 5 minute walk to Jalan Alur. So that's it for today. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe.